Okay, today we're going to be looking at how to get some information out of a drawing. Ultimately, the goal of getting information out of a drawing is to solve other problems. For example, finding out the number of square feet a room happens to be so you can purchase the proper number of square yards of carpet. Or calculating the number of gallons of paint that are needed to paint the walls. Or Again, a, a paint situation, if you make a widget, you need to paint 10,000 of these, how many drums of paint do you need to purchase for that to happen? So again, it's a problem solving aspect. So what we're going to do is create a really basic drawing. We'll go through the three basic areas of getting information out of the drawing, or three different ways to get information out of the drawing. So we're going to start by doing our basic setup routine as we always do first starting with dimensional units excuse me with the units command not dimensional units but the units command we'll go to two decimal places on precision we'll double check the polar tracking set to five degrees absolute object snap we add midpoint and perpendicular as part of our setup process and then we're going to set up a few layers here so we're going to go ahead and set up a object layer for object lines, a dimension layer, a dimension center layer, that's for when you're actually doing the dimensions, putting the center marks, actually the center lines as part of uh, the dimensions, good tactic to have there. And uh, we're gonna do an area layer and a center line, whoops, and a center line layer as I mentioned and a dimension layer. Change the colors of these um, no specifics per se Just, oops let's do this one as a blue one Center lines are green, and then I always go with a fuchsia purplish color for that. Okay, object lines, line weight is going to be 0.5. That's a good standard line weight for the object lines to be. That way they're bolded. Um, dimension center and center need to have line type changes. Those are going to be center 2. Oops, wrong click. Center two for both of those. And that's it. So that sets up our layers. We'll begin with the center line. So I'll close this, use the drop down, make center my current working layer, and we'll draw a couple of center lines. So what I'm going to do here is take the center lines and offset them. We'll use the offset tool. We're going to offset 2.659 vertical line to the right we'll repeat the offset of 3.57 we'll go vertical uh oh they don't touch that's okay We'll grip it, stretch it, hit the escape, grip it, stretch it, so they touch. And then I'll shrink this one up just a smidge, so that way it looks better. I've got two more to go. This one's going to be 2.75. We'll make it a nice round number. So offset, 2.75. We'll offset this to the right and the last one is going to be 1.65 and that's going to offset up. I'll grip and shrink this one so it makes it easier for everybody to see and I'll stretch this just a hair longer and we can always stretch this one up a little bit and the same here. 
So the idea is that I've got three circle positions. And the idea was ultimately, and I'll, you'll see a dimension drawings here in, uh, at the end, so you'll be able to have that, uh, both at the beginning and the end of the, uh, the view. So we're going to flip to the object layer. We're going to draw some circles. Uh, the first circle we're going to draw is going to be uh, 0.875 radius. Second one in the middle, repeat the circle. This one is going to be 1.48. And the third one, repeat circle, is going to be 0.64. So we've got three circles. We're going to draw a couple of tangent lines between the circles, and then we'll have a tangent arc in the middle here. Well, let's do the tangent arc first. That's going to be a tangent tangent radius. So we're going to make this inside area tangent, this inside area tangent, and the overall arc distance here is going to be 6.50 inches. Okay, again, it's really big, but that's okay. That's the idea. We'll then draw the line, hold the shift key down, right mouse click, choose tangent, select the tangent, shift right mouse button, tangent, by the way, as soon as I right mouse click, I release the shift. Okay, so as soon as the shift uh, right mouse button pops the menu up, I release the shift button. We'll select the tangent tool, escape, we'll repeat the line, shift right mouse button, release, tangent, shift right mouse button, release, and tangent. So we've got basically our layout. We'll trim this up. I'll select all the circular objects and linear objects that I've just created. I could select everything on my object layer. We'll trim this away, trim the interior circles away, and all is good. I've got three interior circles to create, so we're going to go ahead and draw a circle, center diameter, and these happen to be 0.65 diameter circles. And there's three of them. They're all the same. So I can repeat circle, select the center point, right mouse click, and choose enter, and it will automatically enter the last value you use. So there's our, our object that we're going to work with today. Secondly, we need to answer several questions. For example, uh, anytime that we're going to do a distance or an angle between two locations, we're going to use what is known as the distance command. And this provides a linear distance. It also, it also provides the change in the x and the change in the y values. So for example, under utilities, under measure, we've got distance, radius, angle, area, and volume. Um, the distance command is what you want to use to generate most of the information. Even though you might have an a it may ask you what the angle is between the two objects, using the angle option much more difficult than it looks. So let's do a quick distance between the two objects. So let's do distance. We're going to select the center and we'll select the center. And you'll notice that it provides us a lot of information. For example, the linear distance is 4.45. The change in the x direction is negative 2.66. Well, if you, and the change in the y is positive 3.57. And the angle um, from 0 is 127 degrees. If you take a look at your command prompt line, the same information applies here. Distance is 4.45. The angle is 127. Delta X and delta Y, the change in the X and the change in the Y direction are provided. So if you can't figure it out by the values given on the screen, you can always look in the command prompt area at the bottom here to see exactly what the values are uh, being provided. When you're finished, you can choose the exit option on the list, 
and we're done. Now what happens if you wanted to see that information again? If you hit the F2 function key on your keyboard, it brings up the text window. That information is displayed as part of the text window automatically. It stores that as part of the text. And it holds roughly about 300 lines of text. So it'll scroll up and down. So the distance command, whenever we ask for angle between objects, or distance between objects, or change in the X and the Y position, you want to use the distance tool. So if I wanted to know what the angle is between this circle here on the left and the one on the far right, it tells me that the angle here is a negative 20 degrees. But the angle in the XY plane is 340. Well, what it did is it said, all right, 0 is 0 and 360. I'm going down 20 degrees from that horizon, which is a negative 20 degrees minus from 360 provides a direction of 340 degrees. So there you have the idea of the direction of angle. And then again it gives us the distance between the two points and the delta x, delta y values. The last item that we have that, run, that we run into is the area. And this is a little bit more complex. Excuse, excuse me, we've got one more before I do area. What about if I wanted to find the distance of a line? I can grip a line, right mouse click, and choose properties. The properties tool will tell me what the length of that line is. I don't have to dimension it. It'll also tell me information like the angle that that line is drawn. It'll also tell me the start and end points. Well, what if I pick an arc? So we, that's the big six inch radius arc that we did. Or six and a half inch radius. So it tells me what the radius size is. It tells me where the center point is. So if I need to know the exact center point, I can locate it. I can also find the arc length. So that's the if I were to take this line or this arc, lay it straight, it's 5.28 inches. Now many times you run into problems that the position of the object needs to be in a specific location. So if that's the case, what you need to do is use the move command. So we'll pick move, window around the object, right mouse click, pick the base point of movement, and we'll pick this one here as our base point of movement. And we're going to locate this at an exact zero, zero, or an absolute X and Y value. We can say zero, zero, we can say five, five, it doesn't matter what that value is, that's specified to you basically in a problem typically. But here's the, here's the key to success. You hit the asterisk key on your keyboard first. So asterisk means it's going to be absolute. We then type in the X and Y. If I say it's going to be at 7.50, comma, do not hit the tab. I know the, the impulse is to hit the tab to the next window. Hit the comma to the next window and we'll say 5.00. And you'll notice that my object now is specifically at 7.5, 5.00. That's the center of that small circle, which is what we specified. That's the cool thing about using the move tool with the asterisk. Anytime that you want to move based on 00's position, you use the asterisk tool. If you don't use the asterisk, then it moves in relationship to the current position.